Hi, I'm Mark Nyholm, the Technical Product Manager for Heavy Duty at Amsoil. We're here today to install a single remote bypass system on a 2014 Ram with the 6.7 liter Cummins. At Amsoil, we have a system built specifically for the 6.7 liter Cummins. We'll get into those steps that make this installation really easy, but the first thing we want to do in any time we install a bypass filter is to drain the oil out of the engine. So follow me. We properly secured this truck up on a hoist so we can work underneath it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to drop the oil out of the sump. Now that we have the oil draining out of the sump of the truck, let's talk about some of the parts that we have in the system that'll help ease the installation. So in this system, you'll have the bypass head and a filter. You have enough hose in order to cut it in half and make two sections to properly run oil from the engine to the filter and then from the filter back to the engine. You have some fittings that'll work with the hose and with the head. You have a billet filler cap. This runs, this will replace the OEM filler cap and we'll run filtered oil back into this. Uh, we have a, a sticker that can be used to help drill holes, which is the same hole pattern as the head. And we have our installation instructions, and this will walk you through step-by-step -step how to properly install this on your 6.7 liter Cummins. Now we're ready to properly find a place that's safe and secure for the head and the filter mount. What you wanna do is go ahead and install the filter onto the mount, and we'll use this to try to find an area and just dry fit it um, on the truck. So what we want to do to ensure that this filter is not going to get caught by road debris is that it's up and protected. So things we want to make it sure is that it's above the lower part of the bumper. It's not going to take debris from a, tr a truck in front of you. It's not by the front tires. It's not behind the front tires on the frame somewhere. What you want to ensure is that no way, no how, this filter can catch road debris in, in harm's way. Now we've moved farther back along the truck. Now we're about right behind the transmission. And if you start surveying areas, there's less things you have to worry about. So it opens up and there's, there's probably a pretty good place right in here as, an, as a space available to mount this. I mean, this would fit here. But the one thing you want to consider is we're now probably seven or eight feet behind the engine. We're getting a little bit far for the oil to be pumped from the engine through the filter and then back to the engine. We really want to stay within six feet or less. Closer to the engine is going to be better. So I would say that as we move farther and farther back, although there's more space available, I would consider maybe a, a location up further up front is better. Now that we've kind of finished surveying underneath the truck, remember in the beginning we thought that the passenger side front frame rail up in this area would be a good location. Let's go back and make sure that with the filter and the head and we make sure that the line's coming in and out and having access to remove this filter is really gonna work for us. So let's take that filter and, and head and we'll put it up in here. It mounts flat against the frame rail. It's clear from the engine, so the engine's not gonna hit it. When we remove the filter, we have perfect access to pull the filter off. And it looks like the line's going to and from the head. Looks like they'll clear anything that we have to worry about in the engine compartment. So I'd say for this truck, this is a really good location to mount this filter. The next thing we want to do is we want to secure the mount to the frame rail. In order to do that, I first took and I held the filter and, and head up to the frame rail and I took a sharpie and just drew a quick little outline of the actual head on the frame rail. That'll help me properly locate my sticker so that I can drill the holes through the frame rail. All right, we have our sticker and we want to take this and put it on the frame rail right where that head was. So the sticker will help us when we start drilling to ensure that the head is mounted in the correct orientation that you had envisioned. We have the sticker installed on the frame rail. What we want to do in order to get a good drill through that is we want to center punch those holes. Center punch and a hammer. Find the crosshairs on the hole. Give it a couple hits and then we'll drill from there. For this particular installation, we're going to have to change up the hardware in which we mount the head to the frame rail. For most applications, the hardware that we provide, a through bolt and a nut, works great. For this application, because we don't have access to the back side of the frame rail, we're going to have to use a little different method. So we're going to pre-drill the holes and then we're going to use these self-tapping bolts in order to secure the head to the frame rail. With the three holes that we have center punched, we want to pre-drill those holes. There, now we have all three of our holes ready to mount the filter head. Before we mount the head to the frame rail, we want to just dry fit our fittings into the head. 
And this will give us an idea of how the lines will intersect this head. From the engine to the head, and from the head to the engine. So as you can see, these are just loose. And then what we'll do is we'll put them up on the frame rail and we'll figure out how we want these fittings to intersect this. As we do this, you want to keep in mind that you're going to have hose coming off this head and you don't want the hose to run into any engine components or any item that could chafe that hose. So get a rough idea of how you want the hoses to intersect the head and then we'll take this head back off and we'll in actually install those fittings to the head before we install the head to the frame rail. For this truck, based on the clearance in front of uh, the frame rail here, we're going to have to leave the fittings out of the head. We're going to go ahead and mount the head on the frame rail and then we'll come back and install the fittings. So what we want to do, and we're going to use the self-tapping bolts on these. We're going to drive one in and then uh, we'll keep putting the other two in. So don't tighten it all the way down, leave it a little bit loose so we can get the other two in, we'll come back and finish tightening them. We got all three bolts securing the head to the frame rail. Now we're going to go back and we're going to install the fittings into that head. Remember as before when we talked about orientating the fittings and the lines coming from the engine and two back to the engine, now we want to install those fittings and secure those in place and start running lines. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to use our thread sealant on the on the elbows that are going to come off that head. So let's apply a little bit of thread sealant. Make sure you get that all the way around. And then we'll go ahead and install these fittings into the head. We have the 90 degree elbows coming out of the head now, oriented in the right position. Now we need to install the fittings that will hook up to our hose. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use our thread sealant. Put a good dose around the entire Tire perimeter of that, and then we'll install those into the elbows. When installing pipe thread fittings, what you want to do is make sure that you go about two revolutions from finger tight. Because this is a tight working area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little sharpie and put a line on that fitting so I can count how many times that line goes around, and I'm shooting for two. Well, we got the, uh, we got the fittings installed into the head. A little tip for you though, we started off using a little stubby wrench because the clearance was tight. But in this situation, a deep well socket to install these fittings was the trick to getting the job done quick. The next step we're going to take is we're going to install a fitting on the end of this hose so we can start getting the appropriate line lengths. This is, the this is your fitting. What we want to do is we want to take and separate these two components. So now I have two parts. We'll set this one aside. Take your hose, make sure that you got a good square cut on the end of it, and this part of the fitting will thread onto the hose. Now it's reverse threads. So normally it's righty tighty, this one's going to be lefty tighty. And we're just going to walk that fitting onto the, onto the hose. Now you might need a little wrench to give yourself a little bit of leverage, but the threads of that fitting will bite into the hose and spin itself on. Now what you do is, once you get towards the end, you'll notice that the the fitting will bottom out on the end of the hose. Just back it off just a little bit so that the end of the hose is just a little bit from seating itself onto that fitting. All right, now we have that secure. The next step we're gonna do is we need to install this portion of the fitting. The easiest thing to do is if you have a vise, you can take this and lock this component down in your vise. And then this fitting gets threaded into this component. So the easy thing to do is to put a little bit of lubricant on the edge of that fitting. We'll stick that into the hose and then you start threading this in. Now these are standard threads now so tightening is normal direction. Take your 9 16 wrench and just tighten this component of the fitting. You want to tighten that until it's just snug. You don't have to put a lot of torque on it, just tighten it until it's snug. That fitting's done. We've loosely fit the return hose on the head underneath. 
And what we want to do is ensure that we have appropriate length to come up to the oil fill cap. So we're not, we haven't routed this permanently yet, so we're just looking to see uh, roughly where it's going to run so we can get an approximate length of hose that we need to run up here. So I have it routed out of the way of the engine and any rotating components. Um, what we'll end up doing is we'll secure it uh, to things in the engine compartment, but at this point, this will give us a rough idea of how much hose we need to go from the return line from the head up to the top of the engine. What we'll do is we'll take a little piece of red tape here and we'll wrap it around the hose to give us an approximate length. And then we can cut that later on. On the 6.7 liter Cummins, the feed line to the bypass filter will be taken right off of the block where the full flow filter mounts. Right on top of the, where the full flow filter mounts, there's a little plug. You'll pull that plug out and then we'll install a fitting into that which will directly feed the bypass filter. All right, now that we know the, uh, the proper length for our return holes, we're gonna cut this so that we can, uh, we can uh, install the other fitting and then finish routing that. Now that we have our return line cut to length, what we wanna do is we're going to finish the upper end of the engine install, which is installing the return line and the, the billet filler return cap into the top of the engine. What we wanna do in order to do that is we're gonna take this 90 degree fitting, we're gonna install it into the top of, into the, top of uh, the billet filler cap. And what that does is it just gives us additional clearance off of the, uh, the hood of the truck. So in order to do that, you're gonna to wanna to take again your, uh, your thread sealant, put a good layer all the way around the fitting. We'll install that into the billet filler cap. Tighten that down. Now that we have this ready, we can remove the original fill cap. And you can just save this uh, for the future if you ever have to, to take the bypass system off if you sell the truck and you want to take the system off. But all that's going to do is that's going to thread in right where the OEM cap was. We're going to turn that fitting to intersect our hose. Now what we'll do is we'll, we'll install this end of the return line and then we're going to route it down through the engine compartment to hook up to our bypass head. Again, these fittings don't have to be uh, super tight since this is the non-pressurized side of the system. But now that we have that on and tight, we're going to start making our way down through the engine compartment, securing it to things that won't chafe the hose and away from any moving components on the engine. In order to make the installation on this 6.7 liter Cummins ultimately easy, we've developed what we call a puck and thread adapter system. And it's three really simple components. Here's the thread adapter. We have a little aluminum puck and then that puck has a gasket that seals to the block. So basically what you do is you remove your full flow filter, you screw this on where the, where the full flow filter normally mounted. So then this is permanently mounted to the engine and then your full flow filter will then mount to this end and seal itself to the puck. What that allows us to do is it allows us to draw pressurized oil and feed our bypass system. Before we install this, we need to install the fitting that we're gonna attach our feed line hose to to feed our bypass system. We want to install this fitting so that our hose will properly intersect the adapter. So we properly installed our fitting in order to have our feed line intersect this. We want to make sure that we lubricate our, our O-ring before we install this. All I did is took a little engine oil, the same engine oil that's going in the truck, put a little dab on there, wiped it on, now this thing's ready to install. Now that we have the adapter system dry fit up in there, we need to properly torque that. So go ahead, get your torque wrench and set it to what the instructions tell you. Uh, we don't want to over tighten it, but make sure you follow the torque that's in those instructions. On this 6.7 Cummins, a full fill filter is mounted pretty high up on the block. Um, it's easier just to install the line to the adapter so you can make sure you can get a proper tightness on this fitting. And remember, all these flare fittings are one and a half flats per your instructions. So what I did is I drew a couple lines on here and we'll go ahead and tighten that to the proper, uh, proper 
come out. We have the feed hose secured to the after. We need to secure the other end to the bypass head. We have both of the fittings on the feed line tightened. Now we want to properly manage this hose so it doesn't end up chafing on the engine or something else in the, in the engine compartment that will cause damage to the hose. So for this case, there's a, wire, there's a set of wire loom that comes down. We're going to secure that right to the wire loom and then that wire loom is secured right to the frame. So it should keep the hose from moving around. We have the adapter installed. We have the feed line running to the, to the uh, bypass system now. Don't forget to install your full flow filter. We have the full flow filter installed. Now it's time to install a bypass filter. Don't forget, put a little bit of oil on that gasket before you install it on the head. Last thing we want to do is make sure that all of our lines are properly secured so they can't chafe anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and look at this feed, this return line. And I'm going to find other things in the engine compartment to zip tie it to that won't cause damage to the line or the hose cause damage to anything in the engine. Remember at the beginning of this job we drained all the oil out of the engine. And that's what we recommend when you install a bypass system. Now, time to put engine oil back in. Before we can call this job complete, last thing we need to do, check the oil. Looks like it's good to go. Installing a single or remote bypass system on a 6.7 Cummins like this is relatively easy. Now that we got it all wrapped up, this truck now has the best infiltration protection that money can buy.